ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا <تصفيق> يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped. None has the right to our ultimate love and devotion but Allah alone who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except in a state of submission and Islam to Allah. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one single person and from him he created his wife and from, from them both he created many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kinship. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah, fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are the words of Allah and the best guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters because all the newly invented matters in religion are innovation and bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance and every misguidance leads to the hellfire <clears throat> one day Al-Walid ibn Ubad ibn Samit the son of the great companion, Ubad ibn Samit, his son's name was Walid or Al-Walid. He pays his father a visit when his father was very ill. And he says he realized that his father was taking his last breath. These are the last minutes for his father in this world. And it seems that soon he was departing. So he says, دخلت على عبادة وهو مريض أتخايل فيه الموت فقلت يا أبتاه أوصني واجتهد So when he saw his father was about to leave this world and was about to take his last breath, he said, O oh my father, O oh my dear father, give me an advice. Give me a powerful advice, heavyweight advice, because he realized that's the last thing his father was going to share with him so he wanted something substantial something powerful something he can benefit from and we know when humans are about to leave this world they awaken more to the reality of life and the words that come out from their mouths actually come from their hearts so he wanted to seize that moment so his father said ajlisuni qala ubada ajlisuni his father asked them to help him sit up when he sat up, he said, قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَطْعَمَ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَطْعَمَ طَعْمَ الْإِيمَانِ وَلَنْ تَبْلُغَ حَقَّ حَقِيقَةِ الْعِلْمِ بِاللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى 
حتى تؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره. He said, Oh my son, you will never find the taste of Iman. You will never experience the taste of faith. And you will never know the truth. You will never embrace the truth of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you believe in Al-Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. Until you believe in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good and the bad of it. Qultu ya abatah, fakayfa li an a'lama ma ma khayru al-qadari wa sharruh. Ma khayru al-qadari wa sharruh. Wa sharruh. Qala ta'lamu anna ma akhta'aka lam yakun li yusibak. So his son said, oh my father, how do I get to know this? How do I get to understand this reality of the decree of Allah, the good of it and the bad of it? How can I come to grips with the reality of this? His father says, you know, you know what has come to you, what has happened to you. There was no chance it could miss you. There was no chance it could pass you by. What was meant to happen will just happen. And whatever happened was meant to happen. وَمَا أَصَابْ أَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ مَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ So you know whatever has happened to you was meant to happen. And there was no way it could miss you. And whatever has never come your way when whatever never happened to you, there was no chance for it to ever come your way. So what was meant to be will be. And what was not meant to be will never be. That's how you understand the reality of Al-Qadr, of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, Ya Bunayya, inni sami'tu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, O oh my son, I heard Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna awwala ma khalaqa Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala al-qalam. Thumma qala aktub. Fajara fi tilka al-sa'ati bima huwa kainun ila yawm al-qiyamah. Ya bunayya, in mitta wa lasta ala thalika dakhalta al-nar. He said, oh my son, I heard Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the first thing Allah created ever, the first of all creation in order was Al-Qalam, the pen. Allah created it. Then Allah said to it, write down everything that is meant to happen. So it wrote down. At that moment, it wrote everything that was destined to happen until the day of judgment. Then Ubad ibn Samit addresses his son Walid and he concludes his advice with this. He says, oh my son, if you die upon anything other than that, you will enter the hellfire. And this shows a very important aspect of our deen which is al-Iman in al-Qada and al-Qadr. Belief in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that Allah has willed everything that happened and will happen, Allah willed it to happen. Allah wanted it to happen. Allah allowed it to happen. And Allah commanded the pen to write it down. And it was written before the creation of the heavens and the earth. The fact that I'm standing in your presence today, the fact that I'm talking to you today, the fact that you are listening to these words today, these were written in that book at that moment when Allah created the pen before it happened. And because it was meant to happen, it is happening now. The reason I'm addressing this today is that we as Muslims have been given 
a great guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great revelation, a great source of enlightenment and understanding that was sent to all the prophets and messengers throughout the ages about the reality of this life, about how to live this life, how to address this life, how to treat it, how to deal with the ups and downs of life, how to survive the trials of this life, how to make it to paradise and save yourself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And one of these great principles that we believe in, one of the pillars of our faith is belief in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Qadha and Al-Qadr. But when you look at the state of the Muslims, you see a lot of Muslims are suffering from depression. A lot of Muslims are suffering from anxiety. At a time when so many people today in this world, Muslims and non-Muslims, cannot live, cannot go through a day without taking pills to alter the chemistry of their brains just to help them get by through the day. Because if they were to face reality by themselves without this dependence on these chemicals, they would not be able to survive. They would not, they would not be able to go through the day without having anxiety attacks, panic attacks, depression, suicidal thoughts, desperation, conflict, and a whole set of mental illnesses and emotional excru excruciating experiences. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He teaches us about Himself, when He teaches us about His decree and about His will and about His decision and about His intention, He is giving us the guidance to handle this life and be on top of the game of life. And that's what belief in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entails. As Muslims and as believers in Allah and as people who try to seek the guidance from the creator of the heavens and the earth, we know that things that happen in life Things that come our way, they fall into one of two types. Things that we, things that are good, things that are pleasant, things that we see as pleasant, and things that are that we see as unpleasant and painful. So we rejoice about the things that are pleasant, and we experience the pain and the negativity or whatever we find to be painful and unpleasant. But we don't see where these, all of these things are coming from, because they're coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we find them favorable or unfavorable, whether we find them pleasant or painful, they are all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has wisdom behind everything. Today I will address the painful, unpleasant things that we have to deal with, the challenging circumstances that we face in life. No one is immune to these kind of negative circumstances. We all from time to time go through some challenges that really challenge our faith and challenge our state of mind. And Islam gives us the ability to handle these. So as the scholars, talk about these challenging circumstances. They say Al-Amru Amran. The things that we face in this life are two types in terms of hardship. Amrun laka fihi hila fala ta'jaz anhu. Something that you have some power over. Something that you can change. Something that you can alter. Something that you can improve. So go about and change it. Go about and do it. Save no effort to change the situation and make it better. وَأَمْرٌ لَا حِيلَةَ لَكَ فِيهِ فَلَا تَجْزَعْ مِنْهُ And other circumstances that you have no choice about. Circumstances, overwhelming conditions that you can't change, that you can't alter. With these things, all you have to do 
is not fall in despair. Not fall in some kind of anger against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the ones that I will address today. So when you have some adverse circumstances, what you can do to change them, do that by all means. And don't save any effort. Don't save any knowledge you have. Don't save any advice that you can tap into and you can benefit from to alter the situation. Because that's human nature. And it's completely legitimate to want to change negative circumstances. But when there are things that you can't do anything about, you can't change them. You can't alter them. They're overwhelming. They are beyond your capacity to change. With these things, you have to resort to acceptance. You have to resort to acceptance. And that means you let go. You let go. You have to accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. You stop resisting reality. Most of our pains come from resisting reality. So if there is a condition that you can't change, it's an unpleasant condition, and you can't change it, you can't do anything about it, so it's inevitable to happen. It's beyond your capability to change. How should you deal with it? You should change your mind and your perception about it by accepting it and embracing it and letting go. The pain that we face in such circumstances comes from one thing, is that we expect a different reality. We wish for a different scenario and we hold on to it and we won't let go. And that creates the tension within us and that creates the resistance and that brings about all the pain. And that's why we all falter. That's why we all crush after these difficult and challenging circumstances. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed humans in a way, in a way where they can handle trauma, where they can handle unbelievable circum negative circumstances. That's how Allah designed us. But most of us hold on to a reality that didn't happen or a vision of reality that, was, that wasn't meant to be. So we don't let what is be, we don't let it happen. We know that Allah willed for this thing to happen. Allah gave permission for this thing to happen. And as long as I can't do anything about it, I should not resist it. I should embrace it. And I should change my perception. And any other possibility that I was holding on, I, should, I was holding on to, I should let go of it. And I should accept reality as the decree and the decision and the will and the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know behind every decision by Allah, there is wisdom, there is mercy, and there is knowledge. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid, ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير. There is no calamity, there is no hardship, there is no challenge that takes place on this earth or in your personal life except that it had been written in a book before it took place, before it happened, before it was created, it was written. إِنَّ ذَٰلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ Indeed, this is easy for Allah. This is easy for Allah. لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ So that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that, is telling you that everything was written. Everything had been written and destined before it took place on this earth and in this life. Allah is telling us that so that we do not go into excess with pleasant circumstances. We rejoice, we go overboard with our happiness about it. And so that we do not lose hope and we do not lose balance when the circumstances are negative and are against us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sharing that with us. And I will reveal inshallah the secret that will help us 
implement this. In another verse in Surah Al-Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma as in Surah Al-Taghabun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi'idhnillah. There is no hardship, there is no calamity or tragedy that takes place or that befalls a people except that it happens by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah. It's the creation of Allah. And we know behind the creation of Allah, behind the will of Allah, behind the decision and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is knowledge, there is wisdom, and there is mercy. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when his son died, some tears rolled down his cheeks. So some of the companions asked him, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you're crying, you're weeping. And he says, Innaha rahmah. It's mercy. That's the nature of human beings. Then he said, Inna al-ayna la tadma' The eye sheds tears. Wa inna al-qalba la yahzan And the heart feels the sadness and the pain. Wa la naqulu illa ma yurdi al-rabb We only say that which pleases our Lord Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he believes that everything that happened had been destined to happen, was written already, was meant to happen. He did not resist reality, but he was still a human being. He went through that experience. He felt the emotions of that experience and he embraced it and he went through it without objecting to the will and the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we believe in the decree and the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we embrace it in a way that empowers us over adverse and negative conditions? This is insha'Allah what I will share with you in the second part of this khutbah. <clears throat> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. We said negative adverse, challenging conditions that we face are either things that you can change if you have the capacity and the power to change them by all means go ahead and do it go ahead and do it but you have to use only legitimate means only legitimate means anything that's haram anything that's illegal you can't do it that's not even an option but there are adverse conditions, there are tra tragedies, there are calamities that either befall you as a person or befall, befall a family member or befall some other Muslims living in other parts of the world or befalls some, any human being in any corner of this globe or even befalls an animal or any of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't do anything to change it. Most of us fall in despair. Most of us dwell on it. Most of us ruminate about it all day and we fall in despair. And we let that negativity take over us and we don't realize that once we dwell on that, once we indulge in that kind of feeling, we will start to question the mercy and the wisdom of Allah. And this is why there is a balance that we need to understand. There is a balance. There's a state of our mind and there's a state of our hearts. Just like Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says, he says, إِنَّ الْشَأْنَ الْوَاحِدِ لَيَجْتَمِعُ فِيهِ الرِّضَى أَوْ الْمَحَبَّةُ وَالْبُغْضِ وَإِنَّ الشَّخْصَ الْوَاحِدِ لَيَجْتَمِعُ فِيهِ الْحُبُّ وَالْبُغْضِ He is saying there are conditions, there are circumstances, there are issues that from one aspect, from one side, you love them. From the other side, you hate them. And there are people that from one side of who they are, you admire them and you like them. And from another side of their character, you dislike them and detest them. So when something happens, something bad happens, you are allowed to go in a state of sadness. You are allowed to experience it. But the human experience is two levels. At the surface level, the superficial level, it is the pain that we experience, the physical pain, the emotional pain, the loss that I go through or you go through. You have an argument, you have a misunderstanding. 
you witness something that causes you to be emotional, that challenges your feelings, that's the surface level. You are allowed to go through that and experience it fully. But yet, there is a parallel state of heart, the deeper state of heart that is content with this very condition and this very situation. Why? Because that state, that deeper state, is connected to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, trust, it trusts in Allah and it knows that this thing that is causing me pain and I'm experiencing the pain, this thing is happening for a wisdom. This thing is happening for a good reason. This thing is coming from the mercy of Allah. Otherwise, Allah would not allow it to happen. It is happening because there is a good reason for it to happen. And if there is no wisdom, Allah would not cause it to take place. So we have this kind of duality. These two levels of perception. You are allowed to go through your worldly experience. The good of it and the bad of it. The pleasant part of it and the painful part of it. You are allowed to live that at a surface level. But at a deeper level, your heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something similar to that was what one of, one of the tabi'een, one of the younger ones of the tabi'een asked one of the greatest tabi'een who witnessed and saw the companions, lived with the companions of the Messenger of Allah. And he asked him, he said, did they make jokes? Did they crack jokes? Because they seem to be such a wonderful generation, such a productive generation. So he thought they were serious all the time. So he said, did, did they crack jokes? Did they laugh? Did they have a sense of humor? He said, He said about the companions, he said, they used to laugh and crack jokes and have a sense of humor. But Iman in the heart was like well-established mountains, unshakable. He's talking about these two things, these two levels. And by the way, this explains why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows calamities and tragedies and atrocities to take place. People go through pain. People go through trauma. People go through challenges. Sometimes extremely overwhelming, destructive, mind-boggling. And sometimes we lose our balance. But we are supposed to experience that at a very superficial level. But when our hearts are connected to Allah, we have another experience, another adjacent experience, another parallel experience that's running at the same time. That's running at the same time and that maintains the balance. So this is why sometimes atrocities happen. Sometimes hardships take place. Sometimes Allah challenges you. So when you perceive that challenge at the two levels, the superficial level where you are allowed to experience it fully and be a human being. And at a deeper level where you see the greater meaning behind it. Where you see the wisdom of Allah, you see the bigger frame of things and why things are happening. And you realize and you know that there is a wisdom and there is mercy and there is knowledge from Allah and there is justice from Allah behind everything that is happening. And this gives you that sense of balance. So when your attention, when your experience is split over these two levels, you can never, and it will be impossible for you to be overwhelmed by any circumstance, by any overwhelming condition. You'll be able to survive it. You'll be able to deal with it, to handle it, overcome it, and transcend it. So the Prophet ﷺ would go through an atrocity. He would go through a trauma. He had his companions persecuted, killed, loved ones, he lost them. And he experienced the pain, but his heart was with Allah. And that keeps life going on. So, I want to make it practical and I will close very quickly. We all go through trauma, we go through hardship. And there are a lot of Muslims that feel lost. They say, they might not say it with their tongues, but their heart are screaming out, why does Allah do this to me? Why me, not someone else? Why do I have to go through this? Why, why are so many innocent people dying? Why are children suffering? Why are innocent kids going through illness and hardship and pain and murder? Why? This is a voice in the heart 
that sometimes or most of the time people can't express with their tongues. But for how long can you hold this back? And that's the problem of living life limping what, because you're leaning only on the external experience. Your immediate circumstances, your immediate experience with life. But there's a deeper experience, a deeper part of you that experiences life from a view that comes from heaven because it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it sees the grand scheme of things. It sees the greater frame, the bigger picture. Everything is right into place. And this part of you that's in your heart and that's belief in the decree of Allah. That's belief in Al-Qadha and Al-Qadr of Allah. That part of you knows that among all other possibilities, what is happening is the best possibility. It has the biggest amount of mercy, the biggest amount of wisdom, the biggest amount of justice. It's the, it's the best reality Allah is choosing for us to happen. And the pain comes, as I said, when we hold on to another reality that we want it to happen and it never happened. And that's where pain comes from. So when you let go, when you surrender, when you embrace what Allah chooses for you, as long as you can't change it with legitimate means, as long as you hold on to it, you embrace it, and you let Allah do what Allah knows what to do best. Don't interfere in the business of Allah. Don't interfere into that. Let Allah take care. Let Allah run the universe the way He knows because our knowledge is limited. So you need to let go of any other possibility and only then ease, hardship will turn into ease. Calamity will turn into a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the secret of believing in Al-Qadha and Al-Qadr. And this is why faith in the creator of the heavens and the earth makes us stronger. It places us in a very powerful position where we can handle life and we can be on top of the game of life. Our faith is practical. Our faith is empowering. Our faith puts us at, a, at an advantage when it comes to dealing with life. But when we take it as a technicality, when we take it only as a tradition, and we, live it, we don't live it, but we keep it in our minds as a theory, we don't experience it, that's when it doesn't pay off in our lives. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us realize this secret of Al-Qadha and Al-Qadr, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us relate to, this, to life at both levels, the immediate level and the higher level or the deeper level where we see the wisdom of Allah in everything and we see the mercy of Allah even in the most despicable atrocities that are taking place on earth. This is the balance that Islam teaches us. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat. I apologize for taking a bit more of your time today, but I think the subject needed to be more, needed some clarification, specifically that I'm receiving a huge number of people going through some hardship, personal experience experiences and you can see their pain is coming from resisting their conditions when they can't change them they are still resisting because they're hoping and they're wishing for another reality and they can never come to terms with the reality that Allah chose so accept Allah's choice for you regardless Allahumma kunil mustadafina minal mu'minina fi kulli makan Allahumma khfil lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa nusurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin